Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. Apple just released iOS 14, which is the latest version of the operating system for the iPhone. This is one of the most significant updates that we've seen for some time now, so I thought it would be a great idea to take a look at the top 10 new features that I think will really make a big difference to the way you use your iPhone. Before we get into it, if you haven't already downloaded it, or if you don't even know what version you're on, go into the settings icon, tap on software update and you'll see your current version. If there is an update available, you'll get an option to download the latest version. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and download it to get started. When you see it for the first time, you'll notice a few changes to the layout of the screen right away. The first thing that you'll come across when you swipe right from the first page of your home screen is the new widget screen. These widgets are small, concise versions of apps that let you see vital information without even having to open the app. You can add new widgets in this section, but even better is the ability to add a widget on your home screen. And you can do this in one of two ways. The first is to slide right to reveal the widgets window, tap on the edit icon at the bottom, then add your new widget to the widgets panel. Now, if you want the widget to appear on any page in your home screen, tap and hold on that widget and move it along to the right and then drag it onto any screen of your home screen. Another way to get widgets to appear on your home screen is to simply tap and hold anywhere on the screen and then a new plus icon appears on the top left of the screen, which allows you to add a widget. For example, I can add a weather widget, the stocks widget, calendar, or music. And with each one of these widgets, you can slide across to choose a different size from the small to mid size and large version of the widget. So as you can see, you really have a very unique opportunity here to customize the iPhone like never before. There are multiple widgets to choose from and you can add, remove or edit them easily by tapping and holding on the widget to access the options. Next up, you can tap on the home screen dots that you'll see just towards the bottom of the screen to access a particular screen by simply scrolling along left and right. And this is a much quicker way to access all of the pages on your screen especially when you have multiple pages. If you feel that you have too many app pages, you can now temporarily hide them. In order to do that, tap and hold on the background of your home screen in order to go into what is referred to as jiggly mode, where you normally go in and delete apps, tap on the home screen dots, and you'll be taken to a screen where you can untick the pages that you'd like to hide, tap on done, and now you'll see you have a reduced amount of pages. Don't worry, the apps haven't been deleted, they've just been hidden. If you wanna restore those pages, tap and hold on your screen background again to go into jiggly mode, and once again, tap on the home icons in order to enter the edit pages mode, and then tick on the pages that you would like to restore. New to iOS is the app library to get to the app library, Keep swiping left to get to your final screen and then swipe one more time to open the brand new app library. The app categories are first shown in folder view, but if you swipe down from the top of the screen, you'll see all your apps arranged in list view in alphabetical order. This is a great way to find and organize your apps, especially when you have hundreds of apps like I do. There is also a search bar at the top of the app library screen, which allows you to find any app by name. Next up is Picture in Picture. This has been around on Android for some time now and I felt long overdue on iOS. This allows you to minimize a video and have it play on screen while accessing other apps or features of the iPhone. At this stage, app support for this feature is limited to the Apple TV app, the Safari browser, and I believe also Twitch. To activate the feature, simply start playing your video. Then when it goes into full screen mode, swipe up from the bottom of the screen and it will automatically go into picture picture mode. You can then tap on the video window to resize it and position it either to the top or the bottom of the screen. And this is ideal if you want to watch a video and scroll through your Instagram feed or open up a website at the same time. You can also tap on the picture and picture video and swipe it left or right to dock it into the side of the iPhone to put it into standby mode. And then you'll see that a tab appears in place of the video and you can use this to slide the video back onto the screen. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't currently support apps like YouTube, but if you do want to do it with a YouTube video, you can do that going to the Safari browser and navigating to your YouTube video. 
in Safari, putting the video into full screen view and then swiping up from the bottom. Hopefully at a future stage, more apps will get support for this feature. If you use Siri, you're going to appreciate the new design in iOS 14. When you initiate a Siri request, rather than going to full screen, you now get a small Siri icon appear at the bottom of the screen, which is less obtrusive, and the results of the Siri request will now appear in a small tile at the top of the screen. Also new to Siri in iOS 14 is its ability to send an audio message both on the iPhone and when using CarPlay, and you can also use Siri to share an Apple Maps ETA with a contact, which I'll show you later on. Incoming phone calls no longer take up your entire screen. So if you're in the middle of something, the call appears in a tile at the top of the screen. So now phone calls won't hijack your entire iPhone experience. There's a new Translate app in iOS 14. And I've got to say, it looks a lot like Google Translate to me. You can select from a number of different languages and whether you want to use the online version or download a language onto your device for when you're not able to access data. Much like Google Translate, you can use a text input or tap on the microphone to have it translate your voice. There is also a built-in translator in the Safari app so you can have it translate websites into most languages. Maps has been updated significantly in iOS 14. There's a new guides feature which will offer suggestions as you explore a new city. You can choose from a number of different vehicle types including electrical, which will then give you info on charging stations. There's also a new bicycle option that will take into account elevation and provide the most efficient route. Now this is not available in all regions at this stage, but will most likely become available in the not too distant future in most locations. Messages now include pin conversations and the ability to reply in line in group chats. And you can now search emojis, which makes it so much easier to find the right emoji during your chats. To do this, simply tap on the emoji icon as you normally do. And in the new search field at the top, type in the name of the emoji you're after and all related emojis to that search request will appear below the search field. There's a new sound recognition tool that can alert you to when your phone hears certain sounds. You can set it up in the accessibility section of your iPhone. You can configure it to recognize fire, a siren, smoke, cats, dogs, appliances, door knocks, and more. To get access to it easily, you can add it to your control center, go into settings, control center, scroll down to the more controls and add sound recognition. Now, when you swipe down from the top right-hand corner of your iPhone, you'll see the brand new sound recognition icon in the control center and you can now use this icon to turn on and off sound recognition throughout the day. That's the list of my top 10 favorite features of iOS 14. There are a few others that deserve a quick mention that I simply didn't get time to check out for today's video. And these include the new car key feature, which ultimately will allow you to use your iPhone to unlock your car. So far, there's only support for the 2021 BMW 5 Series but more cars are expected to come online with this new feature over the coming years. CarPlay has also been improved with new features, including five new wallpapers in light and dark mode. Like the phone version, Siri also opens up as an icon at the base of the screen. You can now share an ETA with anyone in your contact list using Siri, and you can also get Siri to send voice messages. And all of those updates that I mentioned earlier in Apple Maps will also appear on the app version in CarPlay. Something to look out for as more apps become available are uh, app clips. App clips could be a great new feature when more apps come online with this functionality. And it's a new feature that lets you access small portions of supported apps without having to download them fully. This might be useful if you need to access an app momentarily for a particular task and don't have a lot of data available. App clips will be available for Spin, Etsy, Drop Recipes, Parkwiz, amongst a few others. If you have an iPad, OS 14 is also available for download and you'll get access to all of these brand new features that I mentioned today, plus a few specific ones for the iPad. Thanks for watching my list of top 10 features for iOS 14. There are many other additions and enhancements. And if you wanna share your favorite new feature, feel free to do so by sharing in the comments box below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases.